There are toxic heavy metals in your baby food and the FDA and the government are going to continue to allow it. Can we trust them then? <coughs> Hello there, you 5.8 million awakening wonders. Thanks for joining me on this voyage towards truth. The truth that is already within you will continue to awaken. We will form new networks, new relationships. This great awakening shall continue. And it's because of you. If you don't subscribe yet, subscribe right now and turn on the notification bell in case the algorithm is against us. And then we can continue to subvert it and ensure that you get this news daily. You get our best attempt at telling the truth and we can tell the truth better because you let us know in the comments what you believe, what you don't believe, where we've slipped up and we are accountable to you. Unlike baby food manufacturers who seem to be accountable to no one or the people that they are accountable to at least let them put toxic heavy metals in baby food. If I was to start a baby food company on day one I would make this pledge. No toxic heavy metals in the baby food. Can your government and the FDA offer you the same same assurances. Let's have a look how the mainstream media see this crazy old tale. First on CBS Mornings, a disturbing new congressional report out later today finds more cases of manufacturers selling baby food with high levels of toxic heavy metals. The report describes dangerous levels of toxins. Is it a dangerous level though? I would say there's some danger in it. Should we stop it? Not yet. Let's not be too hasty. You mustn't rush things like that. When you're dealing with something complicated, like how much toxic heavy metal to have in a baby food, you've got to go easy, easy, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Otherwise, you might take out too much of the toxic heavy metals. Including arsenic, lead, cad cadmium and mercury in popular baby food products. The toxins can be particularly dangerous. You will not be surprised to babies and toddlers. Which is difficult because often baby foods are eaten by babies and toddlers. Who's the other market? Earlier this year, the subcommittee first shed light on the issue of toxins in baby food. Eight months later, the Oversight Committee has found even more brands selling baby food products with high levels of toxins. All right, so at least they're reporting on it, but... Where's this gonna go? When you find yourself in a situation where there's toxic metals in baby food, it shows you that there are certain food companies that evidently have a great deal of sway. If you're able to introduce a product to the market that is dangerous to the people that you're selling it to, then that's enough of a concern. When they're the most vulnerable people in society, that's even more of a concern. Now, obviously, we're coming off the back of this pandemic where we've seen how the FDA, the government and Big Pharma are able to influence outcomes and policies and able to profit from a situation that's potentially detrimental, certainly detrimental to the people that died, to millions, even billions of people. So how does this story play into those narratives? How does it demonstrate to us how power operates? Why, on day one, that there's a test that says, hey, there are dangerous toxic metals in baby foods. When you go withdraw all those products immediately, sue all of the companies involved and set up new systems for ensuring that babies are head healthy foods. And if they're not healthy, at least not poisonous. The latest congressional report looking at toxins in baby foods says heavy metals are showing up in some major brands. For instance, investigators said two of Gerber's infant rice cereal products contained inorganic arsenic levels over the FDA's limit. It's interesting that the FDA have a limit. There's a certain amount of arsenic that we will tolerate. You're gonna get some arsenic in the baby food. None of us is perfect. Until Jesus Christ himself starts making baby food, we're gonna tolerate a certain amount of arsenic. But that, Jesus, that's too much for anybody. They said Gerber failed to recall those products. Should we recall those products? Uh, we'll get around to it. Most of Plum Organics products contained heavy metals too, including popular Super Puff snacks. We read something's coming from Plum Organics and it's called a Super Puff snack. Shouldn't that be a sufficient reassurance that it's got no toxic arsenic in it? Here we are at Plum Organics. Enjoy this Sugar Puff snack. I feel very well. Oh yeah, no, there's some arsenic in that. And they said Walmart raised the amount of arsenic it allowed in its products. <laughs> we need a little more arsenic. We've got a lot of trouble trying to keep arsenic out of this food. It's exhausting all of our workers here. They're trying to keep the arsenic. Please, just let us put a little more arsenic in there. Okay, you can put a bit more arsenic in there, but not... Too much more. Going from an internal company standard of 23 parts per billion to the maximum allowed by FDA of 100 parts per billion. Could we get 100 parts per billion of arsenic in there? 
Oh, how can I stay mad at you? We reached out to the companies named. Gerber did not answer whether it failed to recall products, but told us it follows a consistent and rigorous testing plan, which includes regular testing of finished products. So I suppose what we're beginning to see is a picture where there is a collaborative relationship between the manufacturers of these baby foods and the FDA. And I wouldn't be astonished to learn that big food somehow funds the FDA and that the FDA necessarily have to have good relationships with the companies that they regulate. In a sense, what you want to feel is that the regulatory bodies that officiate over the standards of products are operating in the service of ordinary people, of the consumer, of the public, however you see us. Not that they're just an agency that sort of rubber stamp and sign off products so that big food can continue to make profit with potentially dangerous products. The Gerber generation is spreading their love for fruits and veggies. But not for long, they're going to have liver disease by the time they're 12. Gerber Nature Select Fruits and Veggies. From our growers' farms to your baby's high chair. Look at how like, organic they're making. Now, the yogurts are grown out of trees. The babies are all like diverse and inclusive, lovely babies. It doesn't matter where your baby's from. We'll poison the little bastard. Gerber. Nourishing Generation Healthy. Does contain some arsenic. Nature. It gives us simple moments. Again, I suppose that what we're interested in here is the way that the mainstream media reviews this situation, and it seems that CBS were doing a good job, at least they were highlighting it, and then how these companies themselves present their products and what the regulatory bodies are willing to do in order to protect you. Nature gives us what we need. At Beechnut, we do our best to work with nature. We work with nature. Sometimes nature is a bit remiss on providing enough arsenic. But we at Beechnut get that arsenic right in there! Not against it. Beechnut Naturals uses real fruits and vegetables. And only the finest arsenic and sweet, toxic, heavy metals that come down from a lovely waterfall bubbling straight into your baby's pancreas. Cooked gently to preserve nature's intended nutrients. Beechnut Naturals. Simple choice. I'll give you a simple choice. Do you want arsenic in your baby's food? Yes or no? I've got babies. Here's my choice. No! For over 25 years, Earth's Best has been dedicated to using only the purest natural ingredients. Earth's Best! What claim to make? This is the best Earth's got to offer. Well, I assume there's no arsenic in it then. There's some arsenic in there. How much? We lobbied to have a bit more in, actually. Not only because it's best for children's nutrition, but it's also the best for the world in which they will grow up. What? What? The world now? It's helping the world to arsenic people down their lung pipe? No one knows more about pure, safe and nutritious baby food than Gerber. Some of these companies have a long-standing history with the American public and have been advertising their products for many years. I would say that this issue ultimately will coagulate around the kind of issues of centralization we talk about elsewhere. That as big food acquires more small companies, they're able to leverage more power through lobbying and control of the FDA, meaning that their products get cheaper to make, higher profit margin and more arsenic for everyone. And that's gotta be a good thing, right? To learn why four out of five pediatricians who recommend baby food... Well, because you're paying those pediatricians would be my guess. Recommend Gerber. Call us anytime. Hello, Gerbers, it's 3 a.m. Why are you calling? My baby's being sick again. We did say only four out of five pediatricians. The other one thinks that there's too much arsenic in it. You know you can trust Gerber. So what's going on here, and how does it relate to broader themes that we explore on this channel? corruption in government, inefficient regulatory bodies, lobbying power, congressional corruption. A study by Health Babies Bright Futures found that 95% of pre-packaged baby foods tested were contaminated with toxic heavy metals. Right away what that tells you is pre-packaged baby foods is not the best way to get food to babies. There are probably other ways of getting food to babies that are not so cost effective and profitable, so those are off the menu. The House Subcommittee on Economic and Consumer Policy revealed last February that leading baby food manufacturers are knowingly selling products tainted with dangerous levels of arsenic, lead, cadmium and mercury, heavy metals that the US Food and Drug Administration and the World Health Organization have declared a human health hazard, particularly for infants and toddlers who are most vulnerable to their serious, often irreversible and sometimes deadly effects. Is this problem serious? Yes, it is. Is it irreversible? I'm afraid so. Is it deadly? Sometimes. Oh, but it's not all bad news then. To date, however, the FDA has set limits for heavy metals in just two types of baby food, infant rice cereal and juice. 
I'd like to propose a motion to have no deadly toxic metals in any baby food. Give us a thumbs up if you agree. The agency's closer to zero plan. That's the plan, closer to zero. We gotta get closer to zero. At the moment, we got quite a lot of toxic heavy metals. Let's get a bit closer to zero. How about zero? Don't be so fucking ridiculous. The agency's closer to zero plan identifies steps the agency will take to reduce exposure to arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury from foods eaten by babies and young children to as low as possible. Oh, thanks, well done, at least you're trying your hardest. <laughs> As HBBF pointed out on social media, the FDA is moving at a snail's pace to take meaningful action, jeopardising the neurological development and long-term health of countless babies. One, two, three, four, oh, it's too many babies to count. Can't even bother to count out the babies now. Can you get the arsenic out of food? No, it's too hard. Can you get closer to zero? Yeah, we'll try to in a vague way. Can you tell us how many babies are being affected? Oh, it's too hard all this. You're not right for the baby food industry, you. The Alliance has started a petition calling on FDA Commissioner Robert Califf to urgently end the legal contamination of baby food and improve the future of our country by moving his agency away from business as usual. Yes, if that business is arsenic in baby food, I would say it's not a good business. The burden shouldn't fall on parents to navigate the risks. Surely it's down to the individual parent to ensure that they do their own laboratory testing to see if there's toxic heavy metal in baby food. The FDA should establish and enforce protective limits for heavy metals in all foods consumed by babies and young children. I would say if the FDA is not doing that, what are they doing? The FDA's Closer to Zero program needs to live up to its name. <laughs> That's all I've got to do is be a bit closer to zero. All that offering, Closer to Zero, is we're not going to actively increase the amount of toxic... That's the only thing they're showing you. Are you going to put more in there? No, we're going to try and do less, actually. Needs to live up to its name and set limits that will make the heavy metal contamination of our food much closer to zero. Thanks, guys. Last year's report revealed baby foods sold under the brands Gerber, Beech Nut, Earth's Best Organic and Happy Baby are tainted with up to 91 times more inorganic arsenic, 117 times more lead and 69 times more cadmium than the Food and Drug Administration's maximum allowable levels. Three other companies, Walmart, which sells baby food for its brand Pear, Parents' Choice, Campbell, which manufactures the Plum Organic line, and Sprout Organic Food refuse to cooperate with the investigation. Excuse me, do you mind if we just see how much arsenic there is in your baby food? No, get out of here, mind your own business. Arsenic is a carcinogen. Oh, that's not good news. That means it causes cancer, of course. And that it can impair neurodevelopment in children, even at low levels. Arsenic is also associated with lung disease, heart attacks and kidney failure. Almost as if the people charged with looking after us would prefer it if we were sick and unhealthy because there's some matrix and network of business interests that would benefit from a population of people eating bad food then being just all weak and vulnerable and easy to push about. Almost as if they don't want strong, vibrant people confronting power. <laughs> My director doesn't look happy with this. <laughs> Similarly, lead is known to alter brain development in children, reducing attention span and intelligence and increasing the likelihood of antisocial behaviour. Good news all round. Cadmium is linked to kidney and gastrointestinal diseases, DNA impairment, cancer, osteoporosis and immune system deficiencies. I'm struggling to see the upside of these particular supplements. Happy Baby is owned by Danone, a multinational food products corporation with revenues in excess of $25 billion. How did Danone exert influence on the government? The known has spent nearly $2 million lobbying Congress since 2020. The company has specifically lobbied acts including... Right, let's see if there's any connection between the known's lobbying and this subject. Then you can see how the system works a little bit and you can decide whether there's a problem or not for yourself, right? Oh, this is interesting. The Baby Food Safety Act of 2021. Danone lobbied against that. This Baby Food Safety Act. I mean, we make baby food. Mm, does it really need to be safe? Where's the fun gone from baby food, you know? Jimi Hendrix, Evil Knievel, woo, baby food. Baby food should be safe. Medical Nutrition Equity Act. Do we need things to be medically nutritional, you know? Come on, man! Alex Hannand hanging from a cliff edge by his fingertips. Where's the craziness in baby nutrition? Continuous Improvement and Accountability in Organic Standards Act. Do you really want people being accountable? Come on, man! Where's your sense of fun? Hulk Hogan fighting in the ring. Mike Tyson. We want a little bit of pep in our steps. The Medical Nutrition Equity Act. Oh, 
all these things are basically saying, would you at least ensure that the food that you're making isn't killing us? No! Gerber was a trusted brand bought out by Nestle. Like, British people know about Nestle because Nestle got famous in this country a while ago for aggressively marketing powdered milk in countries where it weren't easy to get their products out there and where it was detrimental. They campaigned aggressively, this was proven legally, against women breastfeeding their children and stuff. So Nestle got dodgy as fuck previous in this country. Let's see what they're up to with you lot. In 2007, Nestle bought the company for 5.5 billion. It's now the US market leader in infant foods. Nestle has also spent millions of dollars lobbying Congress since 2020, including bills such as the Baby Food Safety Act. So what big food conglomerates do is acquire brands that have won trust, perhaps by creating good products. I don't know enough about it. But I suppose I shouldn't be cynical and sceptical. Maybe Gerber, like in some of them adverts and that, they're making lovely food. Oh, this is good, saves time, good, lovely, nutritious stuff. But then Nestle buy it or another big centralized organization buys it. They have to make a profit. They have to make a return. The way they do that is they reduce standards and they reduce wage bills. That's the way that economic model generally works. You tell me in the comments below if I'm wrong. And then they cut corners and somehow there's arsenic in your baby's dinner now. I don't know where you, where you get to that particular point, but you do because that's what's happening. So there you go. Yet another story where we see that corporate and commercial interests override the most basic human instincts, the most basic spiritual and emotional humanitarian duties that a person might have. Protect the young. Be honest. Put the welfare of ordinary people above the profits of organisations. It shows us too that regulatory bodies are in some ways corrupted. I'm not saying that the FDA is corrupted. I'm saying that the fact that they're funded by the people that they regulate probably makes them remiss and it means that they're too flexible in the standards that they offer. That news reporting is not accurate enough. That advertising is a downright lie. That the government is un unwilling to intervene, probably because of, definitely because of lobbying. And I bet if we looked a little bit deeper, we'd find people in Congress that own shares in these very companies. Why don't you look yourself and put it in the comments below? We can't do everything for you. Help us out. I'm eating baby food that's loaded up with arsenic and lead. My brain ain't working proper no more. Anyway, I believe that when you see something as obvious as that, it's an indication that new regulations should be introduced and the power of these centralised corporations should be rebutted and controlled. And ordinary people should have the right to control and at least influence the companies that provide us with necessary services. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either one of these two. They're equally good. Sign up to my mailing list because I want to be able to talk to you directly and go deeper into this stuff and take you on a great journey into building new communities and new spaces where we can thrive and flourish together. I know that's what you want. I know it's what you need. More important than any of that stuff, though, is that you please stay free.